Wow, there's a title for you. Gun control is not genocide. That seems like a non-controversial opinion, if I've ever seen one. I came up with it after watching the video I want to talk about today. I think we might have a disagreement here. Does anyone remember Mike Adams? He's the self-styled health ranger who produces a stream of nonsense for the website Natural News. Natural News is a crackpot website that does its best to misunderstand science and fearmonger scary scientific terms. It was popularized by fellow voice howling in the wilderness and angriest man on the planet, Alex Jones. We know we're under attack! We know it! We're breaking the conditioning! Ah! Ah! We're coming for you, globalist! Ah! Coming for you! Coming for you! We know what you're doing! Uh, I'm sorry. Ugh. Back in August of 2012, Adams produced a mini-documentary titled Gun Control is Genocide. It's actually part two of a series, but I'll mention part one a little later. Whenever there is a renewed push for gun control legislation, Infowars trots out this Gun Control is Genocide documentary, and the cycle of stupid is renewed. You might not recognize it from YouTube, because YouTube deleted the entire Natural News channel back on March 3rd of 2018. But the mini-documentary lives on in the much sketchier domain of Vimeo. It's only about 8 minutes, but... Uh, well, I wouldn't even recommend <laughs> wasting that much time. Let's just talk about why it's nonsense. A democracy is based on the fundamental concept that a distribution of power among the many creates a better society. It is the concentration of power among the few, such as what we see in a dictatorship, that leads to corruption and exploitation of the people. Adams not only gets the idea of a monopoly of force wrong, he also gets democracy wrong. In the United States and most other countries in the world, from Canada to China, the government already has a monopoly of force, more commonly understood as a monopoly of violence. The basic idea is that individuals living in a state understand that only the state can claim a legitimate use of force against citizens. There are laws in most countries against assault and murder, and typically when a crime is committed, it's the police who handle it, and not an angry mob or vigilante. There are exceptions in case of self-defense, but generally speaking, most modern nations have a state monopoly on violence. And as for how Adams gets democracy wrong, when he says the sharing of power, that's not really the same as the sharing of weaponry. It means the distribution of political power, usually through voting. I can't believe I have to explain this, but democracies don't choose their elected officials by one side threatening the other with guns. True global anti-gun movement would see governments abandoning the use of force against the people. The armed raids on California raw milk producers, for example, or the use of guns to force parents to vaccinate their children against their will are all the result of a monopoly of force in the hands of the government. This part's kind of nice. It's important to understand that not all state violence is good, and while the monopoly on violence is probably better than vigilantes running around taking care of whatever they deem necessary, it's telling that in this documentary, the best examples Adams could come up with were raids against raw milk farms and vaccination. I'm not sure anyone is being vaccinated at gunpoint, and the only evidence of that I could find was this painting by an artist from Sesame Street magazine. No joke, the guy who drew this used to do work for Sesame Street magazine. Until they realized he was a crazy dude and they just kind of cut him off. So there are great examples of the government using its monopoly of violence irresponsibly. For instance, when you see an unarmed man shot by police, usually black. Of course, this video was made in 2012, before Black Lives Matters really came into the spotlight. What are Health Ranger Mike Adams' thoughts on police officers murdering innocent people? Oh, that's, um, oh, oh that's a hot take. Sorry for the pun. But putting aside any Twitter hot take, he consistently tweets about BLM. But by BLM, he means the Bureau of Land Management. It's strange that he never thought of trying to turn that into a hashtag. Until September 2015, when the Black Lives Matter movement really picked up steam on Twitter. So what he's trying to do is hijack the BLM hashtag to support white ranchers taking over a government building. Charming dude. 
that braces us for the next section. R.J. Rummel at the University of Hawaii has extensively studied what's called democide, the term describing death by government. According to his extensive research through over 8,000 reports of government-caused deaths, Rummel estimates that there have been 262 million victims of democide in the last century. That's six times as many people have died from government-inflicted murder than have died in battle. In other words, if you think war is bad, a monopoly of violence in the hands of government is far worse. All right, let's talk about Rudolf Joseph Rummel. He came up with the term democide, which is used to describe when government murders its own citizens. His stats on democide are widely circulated on Infowars and other nonsense websites. And of course, these stats are, at best, contentious, as Rummel seems to take the highest possible number of dead in every instance. As an example, the number of those murdered by the government in China was originally considered to be 35 million in Rummel's first book on the subject in 1991. But later he decided that the government was also responsible for the 38 million killed by famine. So he revised that figure of 35 million to 72 million in his 2005 book. Maybe that's a fair assessment. I'm not really interested in being a Mao apologist here, but I'm not convinced Rummel's stats can be considered authoritative if he's literally doubling them when he finds a new degree of responsibility towards a government. That said, it's difficult to engage with an academic who has written so prolifically on a subject, especially when I've literally never heard of him outside of an Infowars website. But as you might not be surprised, very little of what Rommel has to say, at least from my research, has anything to do with gun control. The closest I could find was this quote. In all this lies my assertion. The freedom established by the American Revolution has been losing the struggle against the counter-revolution. Yes, freedom still lives, but our diminishing freedoms must not blind us to the state's grip on our lives. As a professional, as a businessman, as a family member, as one simply seeking happiness. Most of what one does now is subject to government rules, regulations, and laws, and can be vetoed by judges or bureaucrats who are backed up, ultimately, by the gun. That kind of makes him sound like he'd be a fellow traveler with Mike Adams and his ilk, but it still doesn't go anywhere towards a stance on gun control. If someone can point me towards Rummel's thoughts on gun control, I'd be Highly curious. Rummel is very much a fan of classical liberalism, kind of an ominous term nowadays, uh, although he was talking about that, well, well before it was cool with the centrists. But when Rummel talks about the concentration of power, he's talking about the difference between democracies and communist states. He very much comes across as someone who bought into the Red Scare, and it's strange how he pays close attention to the communist governments failing their people, like the famine in Mao's China, but he seems less interested in acknowledging how many people have died from a lack of health care or due to homelessness in democracies. Apparently, he doesn't see this as the responsibility of a government in a democracy. Adams tries very hard to tie gun control to the stats presented by Rummel, but Rummel's work is pretty explicitly about democracy. And Adams doesn't understand that democracy is not a product of an armed standoff. It's a divide that can't be bridged in an eight-minute documentary. Or by an idiot. Halfway into this mini-talk, shit starts getting weird. Really weird. And because the right to self-defense is a divine right, those who act to erode or nullify such a right are acting in violation of nature and in violation of our creator. Those who support gun disarmament in... <laughs> First, I want to hold on to this image because this woman perfectly captures my response to the idea of God having given people guns. As a non-believer, I'm not really sure what to say to this except... Wow. As I mentioned earlier, this is actually part two of a documentary. That first part of the documentary was titled The Divine Right of Self-Defense. And it's about how animals defend themselves, sometimes with projectiles, like the spitting cobra. I want to play a very short clip from this first documentary to show some of the sound effects Mike has added to this little squirrel. The California ground squirrel is known to distract predators such as the rattlesnake and gopher snake 
from locating their nest burrows by kicking sand into their eyes. Whew, so intense. Anyway, I'm not going to really talk about that video much more. It basically says the same things in this video while throwing in some shade towards police officers and plenty of other examples of animals throwing things, projecting things at each other. The gun control is genocide doc dates itself. I, I, I can't. It's really called gun control is genocide. I, I still can't get over that. The doc dates itself by talking about the shooting at the movie theater in Aurora, Colorado in 2012, where gunfire killed 12 and wounded 58. I'd also like to note how strange it is to think that this was only six years ago. It, this seems so far away, so far back in the past. And thinking about how little has been done to change this, it makes much of Adams' commentary seem even stupider, if that's possible. In banning concealed carry weapons in the hands of legal and lawful owners in their city, Aurora officials created precisely the conditions that allowed a massacre to result in a large body count. They forced the citizens to be defenseless, even while knowing their own police forces could not provide protection to everyone. Aurora may, in fact, have been selected by the shooter precisely because the city's gun restriction laws would practically guarantee a disarmed crowd. Laws that ban concealed carry, it turns out, create what might be called a hunting preserve for psychopaths. Another wow moment. I usually don't see such a fluid stream of nonsense every day, but hey, the internet is a magical place like that. First off, the idea that gun control would have no effect on the 2012 shooting is ridiculous. The shooter, James Holmes, had visited three different psychiatrists, and one of them had described him as having homicidal thoughts. That didn't prevent Holmes from going out and legally buying three guns in the weeks leading up to the shooting. In the interest of balance, let me be a dirty centrist for a moment here, because there's a caveat to that. The psychiatrist who noted Holmes' tendency towards homicidal thoughts decided not to put him on a mental health hold because she believed he was borderline and putting Holmes on hold would have inflamed him. That might put the onus on her, but keep in mind that someone put on mental health hold, which means 72 hours or less at a mental health facility, does not have to give up any guns they may have purchased before being put on hold. And yeah, Holmes had purchased a gun weeks prior to the psychiatrist noticing his homicidal thoughts. If police were given the power to confiscate the weapons of a man with homicidal thoughts, and if mental health professionals could be confident that putting someone on hold would ensure that they then wouldn't be able to go out and easily kill some people afterwards, it might have helped things. But this is getting pretty heavy, so I hope Mike can cheer us up with something. I will end this piece with a prayer. Oh, thank God. <laughs> May we forever be blessed with the gift of living in an age of peace and sanity and personal responsibility. And yet, should such ideals fail to be embraced by individuals who depart from the realm of rationality, I pray that we may always value, protect, and retain our right to reluctantly but decisively engage right in acts of self-defense. That Hold on. What the fuck is this? Did did Mike Adams record this? Is this some kind of is this some kind of first person home invasion fantasy he's showing us? Oh god, Mike. These are home videos you shouldn't be sharing with the world to make fun of. And oh oh god, Mike, do you have any more of these? Anyway, back to the prayer. I pray that we see through the propaganda and the deception of citizen disarmament politics. He doesn't talk about this in the video, but I want to mention it anyway. What is up with these pro-gun people and Nazis? Can they really not think of any other examples of countries with gun control laws without mentioning the Nazis? Modern Germany has gun control laws and seem like it's more similar to the US than the Germany of the 1930s. The gun laws of Germany in 1938 actually made owning firearms much easier for the average German citizen. It restricted gun ownership of Jewish people, but plenty of Jewish people actually had guns leading right up to the Holocaust. Turns out that owning guns wasn't enough to stop state violence. But perhaps an engaged political class that stands in solidarity with a persecuted minority might be a stronger deterrent. What does Mike Adams have to say about Black Lives Matter again? 
Oh, yeah. I'll spare you the rest of the prayer that <laughs> Mike Adams reads out for us, especially since it's got a lot of images of dead bodies and even worse, more of Adams' drivel. He never really addresses the fact that dozens of countries around the world have thoughtful gun legislation and have not descended into some kind of Nazi hellscape. Responding to Adams' use of Rummel, his citing of the Holmes case, and even discussing Nazi gun laws introduces nuance and complexity that you don't see in his work. Even at only eight minutes, the video still makes the same tired points repeated without adding anything new. I didn't know you could get this repetitive with such little real estate. The simplistic trappings of people like Adams are so effective, not just because they mislead, but also because they nullify discussion, or at least make it very difficult for anyone with a rebuttal. Gun control is genocide. When you put it that simply, anyone who wants to believe such an obvious lie will swallow any garbage you present them, even things that are obviously not true. And while I hope this response went some way into debunking his falsehoods, I suspect that Adams' fans don't really care. He's telling them something they want to believe, and that's enough. In the future, I want to try something different. I imagine we'll still be laughing at buffoons like Mike Adams, but reacting and debunking only gets us so far. I want to understand where people like Mike Adams come from, and what drives them to spread garbage information. It's probably just money, isn't it? If you enjoyed this video, consider following me on Twitter. My handle is at Jose, not a J, that is all one word. And hey, why not subscribe to my YouTube channel or hit that like button or share this video with a friend. Oh, I feel like a proper YouTuber now. Thanks for watching, everyone.